before I even announced my retirement, to sign a contract for four-day cricket only for the season of 2015-2016 uh, because of there was no enough players and I must go there and groom the upcoming players like I think it was Lungi, Ngidi who are just Lungi, starting at Titans, yes, yes. Uh, Junior Dala. said, no, just please come there and become a mentor and then go and play for Easterns as well, become a mentor for the uh, Easterns cricket as well. So that's when I agreed to sign only uh, for four-day cricket. So I didn't even sign for one-day cricket or T20 cricket. That was my contract as well. And so I got approached in 2015 while I was playing four-day cricket that people maybe... I tried to, to, to explain to people that when I got approached for match fixing, I was not even contracted to play four-day cricket. I was uh, not four-day cricket. I meant to say T20 cricket. If you have to go back and look when the last match I played as well, it's you can see how many matches I played for, for the Titans T20s. So that's when I got approached in 2015. And then I took it for granted, or it, I thought maybe it was a joking way. Because, you know, it was one of the closest friends that I played with him. We used to go fishing together. We used to do th things together as a family. I knew his family. I used to go there on weekends. We bribe, we do things. But for me, I never expected that someone that very close could do such things and sure. thinking about, you know, match fixing and all that. So it's it's it's, it's very hard. It's difficult even today. You know, I, I, I'm known as that person, as a match fixer, you know, and I regret all those things that happened. And like I say, I wish I can just reverse everything and then start all over again because of I was getting threats my family was in danger. It was it was scary. My wife almost divorced me. My kids were crying every night. It, it was tough to see me that your dad is this. He's been under investigation for corruption. I remember my daughter. She goes like, you know, Daddy, are you gonna go to jail? Daddy, what's gonna happen to you now? It was frustrating, you know. My wife, she goes like, no, I can't be close to you because of. Sometimes she feels like she's been followed. Uh, sometimes, you know, I will get calls from India where they said no if I open my mouth and then they'll come after me they'll know where I live for something that many people didn't even know why I have to move from Centurion to go and live in Sochanguve it's because of that as well because of we were scared so we have to go and live in in, in, in Sochanguve where we felt because of my brother-in-law was there everybody was there you know it was it was, it was home so people didn't even know why we moved from uh, Centurion to Sochanguve it was because of safety and my brother-in-law, I remember, I used to drop my kids at school in Centurion. You would sit there at the gate from 7 o'clock until 2 o'clock, wait for them to come back and pick them up and drive back to Sanguve for almost like five to six months because of my life was in danger. So I have to make a quick decision as well. So I have to say to my wife, I don't have money to fight this thing further so that my sentence could be less, but I have to make a decision she goes like, let's do whatever is best for us, you know, and the safety of the family. And when they imposed that 10 years, you know, I was not happy about it. I wanted to continue and appeal. But the thing is, again, it's going to be dragging and dragging. And I didn't have that much money to take a big company like CSA to court. And then we drag. They can drag it for six six months or 10 months. Mm -hmm. How am I going to pay for the yeah, legal fees? So, it was going to be too yeah, so my wife, she goes it. like, you know, List, whatever they're giving you, just take it and then we'll move on. We'll pick up, we'll do whatever. You'll, you'll move on and then this thing will pass, you know, because there's so much happened in that 2015, 2016 that I don't think uh, it was there in public. There are a lot of cover ups as well. If you now in the SJN, in that report, there were about 30 players that they were approached, but only eight or 10 were banned. So I know what happened. I know what conspired. I know a lot of things because of. I even went to 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 to, to Mr. Body as well, the, the the main guy. I asked him why, and he told me everything. He told me everything. Who did he approach? Who was involved? And how did those guys get caught? Because of when they got caught, it was supposed to be a match was supposed to be fixed. So he told me what happened, why, everything, what happened, so that uh, the whistleblowers have to run and go and report Gulam. It's because of the deal didn't go well. But 
there's so many things in that case. I wish we can have like a, a Zondo commission where we can go and they call everyone to go and and and, and, and explain his side, because yeah. of this thing of talking in the closed doors. I don't think it it, it would. Yes, oh, because I want to tell the honest truth, the side of my story, everything, and who was approached, who got approached, and what happened. Who the names? Everybody must come and answer. And at the SJN report, it says they did investigate the other 30 players, and the other 22 players, and then they found nothing. But for us, whatever they found, did they do the same thing to the other guys? No, I don't think so. Because of there is big names in that list, the 30 list. There is a couple of international players in that list, especially those ones who comes and play as a, a overseas pros. Yes, that yes. I was told that some of them they were involved. But for me, it's just I don't. I'm scared. I don't want to talk much about it because of you. Know, they're gonna shut your doors. Yes. Now I still want to continue. I still wanna after my band. I wanna coach. I wanna coach the youngsters. I wanna give back. I wanna go to Limpopo, my hometown, and help yes, yes, that yes. franchise to grow. I wanna help the youngsters. But at the moment now, when you open your mouth and talk, there's always a way that they're finding to 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 block you not to talk to him. I don't have that energy anymore. So I just said, no, it's fine. I will wait for my band to finish and then I'll come back if I'm allowed to come back and then I can coach and give back. Because I have a lot to give. Uh, it's not about coaching as well. There's a lot of things with their journey, being in a changing room where I was the only black guy, touring, you know, all over the world, playing cricket as well, different count. I want to give back to the upcoming, especially the black African players, you know, but for me, I have thoughts as well. And somebody asked me, why your son, he doesn't play too much. He's very good in cricket. We play at home. But why don't you want him to play in a higher level? I said, no, I don't want him to, at the environment, yeah. at the moment, or yes. that I was. You know, yes. I'll be failing him. He'd rather go and study and become something and work. I don't think for me, to be honest, as a black African cricketer, cricket I was told once in a changing room by one of the white players that cricket is not for you guys. You guys, are, we are forcing things. No. And no. I wanted to realize, yes, maybe no. it might be true or it's wrong. And I tried to prove myself so many times. I remember... That was, was your teammate. That was your teammate who said day. that. Yes, the teammate. Yeah, one of the white players says to me, yeah, you must pull up your socks now, you know, because there's these upcoming fast bowlers. You know what I, I said to that boy? I said, you know what? You know where I'm sitting at the moment. I will retire where I'm sitting. No one is going to take my spot. And I did that until 2015, 2016 when I was banned. I sat in the same seat in a changing room for more than 12, 13 years. Only when I'm injured, they can put someone there. But if I'm playing, no one ever sit in that. So the match fixing part, you know, it's something that it's very sensitive. I don't want to reveal much, but just a highlight. I felt sometimes i felt like not sometimes i always feel uh the the investigation it should have went more and more and more and you know i remember some of the guys felt we felt that we're being targeted and stuff like that because of 2013 2012 2013 we wrote a letter to csa about uh, we call it uh, beeps or water must fall. That why every time all the black African players, when they go yeah. to the World Cup, they're always carrying water carrying and wearing water. beeps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. 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 So we asked that question. Yes, I and I remember there was rumors that they're going to deal with us. And then. I remember that incident, yes. So it, 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 there's a lot of things. I'm not blaming what happened to the match fixing, whatever, but I just feel everything just happened within the last two, three years from 2013, 14, 15. Cricket then, it was not good. And there was 2014, I think, all the black players in South Africa, we said we're going to have a stand down. So all the matches that we're going to be playing on a Friday, we're going to protest. When the game's supposed to start in the field, we're all going to walk away from the pitch until all our grievances has been heard. But everything was never... We, need, we didn't even get answers from uh, about that letter that we wrote only now to realize later on that yes there was a couple of meetings there were meetings but, but i didn't even know that there were meetings and uh, about it and stuff like that so the match fixing guys i might say to you Sponella, is i will advise i won't mind even to sit down 
with the current players or the upcoming players and tell them, guys, stay away from those things. Because I know myself, even today, it's still haunting me. And it's, it's something that you don't want to be in that space. It's, it's, it's not all about being banned. There's a lot of things that go behind your head. I was not eating well. I was not sleeping well. You know, I lost so many friends. People that were scared of me, like, I don't know. I was like this criminal or this person that killed someone that is a murderer. I lost so many friends. You know, I lost so many friends. My wife, my kids were the most closest people I had and my family as well because they were supporting me so much. Yeah, no, this is really uh, hard, hard stuff, uh, Abby. Even myself, yeah. I'm getting emotional as you speak, <laughs> of which I, I should be. Yeah, I no, be, I it's, it's very tough, you know. Yeah. yeah, I always tell people that, you know, you might see this atheist smiling and laughing, but you don't know where I come from. You don't know what was going on in that period during the match fixing. Guys, to, to, to get a call from India telling you that you must keep your mouth shut, you know, or else we're going to come after your family. And I remember one call, I was told that we don't need to be in South Africa to do that. We have people there. And I, I did mention that and raise that concern to CSA. But for me, that our, I, I, I felt like CSA for them, it was about sponsorships. It was about getting that case closed. They didn't care much about it. They, I told them, guys, my life is in danger. They didn't care much about it. They told me that don't worry about those guys. They're in a red flag in international airport. They will never fly here. I said, no, but they told me they don't need to be here to do that. Exactly. But that's when I said, you know what, whatever is coming, if it's a life ban, if it's 10 years or it's 50 years or 100 years, I will take it so that nothing can stop and then I can move on with my life and look up. Because I had a young, young family. My wife young. The kids were young. My siblings were very young, and I look after my siblings because of my dad passed away, my mom, so they rely on me. So if I, something happens to me, I felt like it's going to be even causing more pain to them. So that's when I realized, you know what, let me just accept whatever is coming and then move on with my life. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Hardcore stuff indeed, AP. <laughs> I do not have even <laughs> words. Uh, I don't know what to say <laughs> anymore. Uh, if I may ask uh, uh, anything, uh, what are you up to these days? Are you busy with the academy? Are you not allowed even to proceed with the academy? What are you up to these days? Uh, I'm busy now uh, helping, you know, in school coaching, especially with the private schools, because of uh, I can do that. It was part of the agreement with the CSA that I can coach in private schools where they're not uh, affiliated with CSA or ICC. So that's what's been keeping me busy at the moment, you know. I'm doing physical education as well, uh, studying as well, trying to become this kind of Ethan Barati uh, advocate or a lawyer. So oh, I've been wow. studying as well. So, yes, so I'm not just Fight for justice, yeah, fighting still... for justice. You have seen yeah. it all. You've got all the reasons to, be, uh, to, to fight for justice. Yeah, and then another funny part is I even end up, you know, knowing even how to coach food as well so <laughs> that i never thought i will so yeah it's, it's you know the, the, the past uh, five to six years i've been learning a lot of things you know uh different sports like netball great, great. i've been involved in tennis i've been i've been involved in these other sports yeah so for me that's what i've been doing as well and trying to make a living as well because of to be honest with you cricket was the only thing that i i knew and yeah, i have yeah. to finish my metric and go and study but I decided you know what cricket was there you know, it was good money the traveling was good I even forgot to study and my other advice to the upcoming cricketers as well who want to play cricket as a profession they must study and study and collect degree diplomas whatever they can collect they must do that because of remember sport is not a lifetime thing at the age of 35 36 37 things start to change and then from there what not what are you gonna what are you gonna do because if you're not gonna be getting the amount that you used to earn anymore now you have to sit in the office and do something different that you've never done so my advice you know is is they, they must collect something while they're playing you know my excuse was why i didn't study then it was like i never had time we have so much time we have so much time as cricketers you know that we never realized that if you travel to india for a month. You don't play every day. You have day offs that you sit in a hotel and do nothing. You can 
submit your assignments and stuff like that. So I always, you know, advise, especially these young boys that know, guys, if you have an opportunity to register with any institution, register, and then you never know. Cricket is not a lifetime, guys. Sports, it's it's, it's not a career that it's a long term. It's a short term. You can get Absolutely, injured. Yes. Something can happen. And then what now? Where are you going to fall into? So I have to learn my way up now, you know, how to be street smart, street, uh, street smart, how to meet people, how to sit with people I don't even know and talk and present things to them. You know, this is Ethan Balat. Yes, they might know he's a cricketer, but now we're talking, for example, uh, about running a, a, a furniture shop. How? I never, my, my, my whole career was about cricket. Now you have to present something. You have to write business plans and all those things. Yeah, Sponel, it's, it's, it's been a, a long, yeah, yeah. long, long journey. Very, very long, tough journey. Not just long, long yeah. and very tough journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, uh, time is not on our side, but before I let you go, I think I wouldn't be doing justice to this interview without asking you specifically about social justice and nation building hearings. Most pe it, it happened, you know, most people believe those hearings were not perfect, and however, they were much needed so, for South African cricket. What is your take in just a few words, uh, uh, maybe two or three minutes? Uh, time is definitely not on, on our side, uh, Eddie. Okay, um, the SJN, I think it was a, a good initiative from the start, you know. Uh, if you look at Doc, uh, Dr. Eugenia, she's the founder, and then that's her baby. I always call that that's her baby. But, you know, things didn't go well towards the end, and then she has to resign at CSA, or I don't know, got fired or whatever happened. She had a good plans with it, you know. I remember we had a meeting, because, like, uh, there is this thing, SJN, it's coming along. So it's just going to help with you guys healing a lot of things, not even about match fixing or whatever, but it's about your careers because of listening to your stories since you started at the early age. You guys, it's, you can tell a story, you know, how where you started in Palabura, how you used to go to matches in a baki, to travel from Palabura to Pulukwani. You know, it's cold. In the morning, we have to pass Mahuba Sloof there in the mountains. You know, we used to go inside our bags, uh, cricket bag to zip ourselves because it was cold. We used to go to practice with a truck, you know, the furniture truck. It was open truck. So we used to do that. So the SJN, I think, you know, uh, it was a good thing. And then people had maybe so much expectation uh, on that. They were expecting maybe something because of... There were a lot of people who were not happy uh, about the reports and stuff, and I understand that as well because of I don't think that report for me it was a fully re it was a full report and all the recommendation that uh, uh, it, it was there with Advocate Trevenza and his team. You know, I felt everything was just been rushed, uh, and I don't I don't I don't blame most of the guys saying that. I think it was a waste of time as well. Now, to me, I felt like it was a waste of time to go there and talk about our 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 journey, our our history, or whatever we went through. For me, we're not expecting something big, but sometimes you must just acknowledge, yes, acknowledge yes, that no, wow, yes. it happens to me. It never happens to them because it never happened to them. Most of the players they never went through what we went through. So for for a lot of people to criticize that, yeah, that thing it was just a flock it was just a witch hunt but remember it was my story it was my stories what i went through the salary description uh, discrepancy where we used to earn less than the the, 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 the white counterpart the white boys they used to earn a lot of money yes a white boy was studying cricket for six months and then you just find this boy just bought a house in a big house like a three million rent house and you ask yourself but i'm playing with him and this hour i've been there for years when you go to the bank, you can't even afford to, you can only afford something less. But how are they getting, those guys, especially the white players, they used to get endorsements that we didn't even know that they were there. Their contract was not even the same, to be honest. They can say, no, everything has been audited, but I don't think so as well. And for SJN, if Dr. Eugenia, she was there until the end, I think the things should have been different because of she, she knew what was going on. She was not even going to be uh, trying to cover up things. She wanted to tell the truth, and she wanted everything in black and white. If you're saying 80, 2010, he was the highest paid player. 
But what about this boy? He was an international player. He was playing for international cricket, but he was earning less than Ethi. That doesn't make sense. An international player earning less than me. No, it doesn't make sense. Because of he's it's having international cap. Yes, he's yes, supposed sir. to earn yeah, more than up, me. Yeah. But there were, there were those reports, yeah, there were those reports that I was earning more than some of them. That is not true. There's no way that I will earn more than the guys who were at the international level in and out. It's impossible. Because already your profile is bigger than me that because Absolutely. I was just a franchise player. Yeah. So I think the SJN, it was a good thing. But, you know, it just it was being criticized a lot. And if you look at the comments, again, it's the same people that don't want to be told the truth and be asked why, why. And, you know, one thing in South Africa that it's going to go on for long is uh, to not to touch racism. Every time you talk about racism, it's witch hunt. Every time you talk about racism, we beat her. Every time you talk about racism, we don't appreciate or whatever. You know, so it, it, it's quite tough. Uh, at the not at the at the moment, you know, just to touch on Temba at the moment as well. Temba, Temba at the moment, you know, I don't want to say yes. Temba Pavum as well. You know, every article for the past four or five days about Temba. Temba is not good enough. Temba about that. But remember, we 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 we, we as sports people, we, we go through a patch where you don't perform, you don't do well. It happens there to everyone. Somewhere. It happens to everyone. Yeah, there is some white players who don't do the same thing, but they've been given a lot of opportunities until they've proven themselves. But as a black player, if you've been given two games, if you don't perform, you're not good enough. But white players, they will play 10 to 15, 20 matches until they pick themselves and then they played well. You know, there's, there, there, there is those kind of things that the SJA and they should have even went deeper. But the things, they were rushed to do things, like Advocate was told that by end of this month, uh, he must give a report. So he didn't even go and do a lot of in investigation about what happened. Is it true? Because they only gave the report based on what they found. But for me, is yeah, I wish the SJN it can get the right people to run it, and then it will it it it, it, it will be a good it will be a good uh, platform. But I don't think that it will work because of remember it is poking a lot of. Uh, uh, Big, you know, big names. Yes. You know, there is, I'll call them the, the big dogs. Yes. You know, there's people that are untouchable. There yes. is people who are touchable. They have to be you know? protected. So, have to be protected. Yeah, once you start yes. mentioning Sbonele, but you know that Sbonele, you can do whatever. Yeah. Sbonele has got people on top, on top that they yeah. can just make one yeah. phone call and say, listen here, please fire him. We don't want him. Please make sure that he doesn't get an ex-contract. So that's how it works, you know. We have to sacrifice. We have to say okay it's fine we have to to say whatever we've been given we have to accept whatever been told we have to do it because we knew our backgrounds our where we're coming from we come from poor backgrounds yes, yes. so once you lose this and then what now where are you gonna go so there's a lot of sacrifice that i went through to be honest as well to be honest with everyone i have to sacrifice a lot where i knew that this was wrong but i knew if i stop here What's yeah. going to happen next? You'll Where is going to be my next meal? Yeah. Where is going to be my next meal? Where Who's going to pay for your kid, school fees? What's going to happen? So I have to say, okay, it's fine. I'll take it or I'll sign it or I'll do it. And then you just move on with your life. Oh, Ed, thank you very much Ed, for your time. Because of time constraints, we'll have to wrap our discussions right here. Ash, I'm sure you can hear even the tone of my voice. I do not have the energy anymore. After listening to your story, I'm really, really uh, down now. I definitely do not have the energy anymore. Uh, it has vexed me completely, no. your, your your journey. It's definitely, definitely hard. I really appreciate your time. And all I can say is keep strong, uh, Eddie. Before I let you go, uh, on social media, are you available? Where can our uh, listeners uh, get uh, in, in touch with you on social? Do you have any social media handles? If, if yes, uh, kindly share them. Yes, I think on, uh, my Twitter handle is eighty. And then Facebook, I think, I uh, can't remember. I think it's Athi in Katekon Balati. And then Instagram is uh, at Athi 80. Yeah. So my playing number, number 80. Yeah. Okay. So F -A, that's, A, that's my handles. Yeah. So I have a couple of followers as well. So, okay. yeah. So oh, there, there mustn't be surprised what I do on my weekends. I love cooking. 
Yeah, so they will see a lot of pots every Saturday or every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are you like uh, so? It means maybe we should take you on uh, some competition with our former finance minister, Mr. Tito Mboweni. I believe he's also ah my my, so my, 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 my 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 homie. Yeah, Tito, your former finance minister, Tito Mboweni, your homie. Yeah, maybe we should yeah, put you actually, guys in actually, one kitchen and compete. Yeah, a quick, a quick story. My grandmother uh, in Zanin where and Tito's mother is about like three houses. Wow. And when I was young, I used to look up uh, Tito's mother's cows as well. So wow. when I was young, you yeah. know, I used to be a yeah, a head boy, so a head boy. So I used to look after the cows and stuff. So I knew uh, Uncle Tito for for so many years, and yeah. So I always see him as well when he goes back to 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 uh, the, that small village there in Sarin where I grew up, yeah, where I was born. Definitely, we'll get you guys uh, yes. on, some, on some cooking competition. Uh, on a serious note, um, we'll definitely try our level best to get hold of a uh, cricket SA just to find out if they will uh, uh, appreciate uh, the right uh, of uh, reply to some of the things that we have discussed and hear what they have to say. We'll definitely extend an invitation uh, to them uh, Eddie, and take it from there. Thank you very much uh, once again for your time, Eddie. All right, thanks, Bernard. Thanks to the listeners as well. Thank you. Uh, I guess it's time for me to love and leave you, but I'm leaving you in the warm and capable hands of my colleague, Jacqueline Friedman, who will be with you from 1 o'clock till 3 p.m. Thank you very much uh, for allowing me in your space. I do not take it for granted by any chance. Let's do this once again next week, Saturday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. Till then, from me, Sponor Ngobo, it is... Adios and uh, bye bye. We're going to teach you this song. Come on, sing, sing. I said, Oh, 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 it all comes down to love. Oh, oh, oh. That's the only word. Let's sing it again. Now. I said, oh. oh.